Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing great. So today we are going to talk about how to calculate sample size for your study if your particular outcome is in categorical. So for that you would use a proportions calcul uh, calculation that is um, basically when you have a categorical outcome and you want to see, want to assess either a frequency or occurrence. You can also assess prevalence of some disease, incidence of any disease, any outcome, uh, presence of uh, particular adverse effects of the treatment. You can basically, the, the main aim of this type of sample size calculation is to find out the uh, number of patients you would require, number of people, patients, participants you would require in your study to find out the most reliable results, right? To get the most reliable results, right? So this is basically the formula for this. Obviously, I don't want you to get all worked up because of this scary formula here because we are not going to use it. What we are going to do is we are going to make your life really simple by using a software called OpenAPI. Now, a lot of students don't know how to use OpenAPI and today you're going to learn how to use it and not depend on anyone else to calculate the sample size for you. So um, when you go to OpenAPI, there's a, there's a menu on the left side of the screen and you go down to the sample size and you see that there are different types of sample size. So if your outcome, as I explained, if it's categorical in nature, then you will click on the proportions sample size. Now, when you do that, this window will pop up and it will show you exactly what I showed you a little while ago here. It will show you the formula it applies and it will show you uh, how it actually calculates everything, right? So you will have to enter the new data. Now, when you do that, this window should pop up. Now, as you can see that you have to now fill in the blanks here to get the sample size of your study, right? So for population size, the first variable that it asks you is the population size, of course. Now, you will have to leave it as 1 million if your population is larger than 1 million. For example, uh, if I am going into a community, if I know the particular, you know, particular number of people living there, then I can add the number, exact number here, right? For example, if it's 75,000. It's less than a million, then I would add this particular number. If it's more than a million, then I would not bother doing that because I know that it's not going to make any difference on my, you know, sample size. All right. So next up is anticipated frequency, which is denoted by the le small letter P. Here you can add uh, 50% if you do not know the expected or anticipated percentage of that variable that you're looking for. For example, in, in an example that I'm working on right now, I'm trying to figure out the percentage of people who have depression in a community, right? Now, what I'll do is I will add the number of people who have mental disorders worldwide. That would be my anticipated frequency for my own community as well, because we tend to generalize the uh, results of um, these published studies. So that's what I'm going to do here as well. I'm, I'm not going to expect that the number of um, people with depression in my community would be larger than that. It could be the case, obviously. It could be more than that. It could be less than that. But since I don't know that, since I'm actually exploring it now, what I'll do is I will use the published literature as my guide to get me the anticipated frequency. So let me just show you the study that I found in 2019 that states that 12.5% of people had, had a mental disorder in 2019. This is one in eight people. So this 12.5 is basically the percentage that I'm going to write here. And obviously, it could be more than that. I could, you know, uh, it, it, the results could show, the results of my findings, my study could show that the, per the percentage of depression in my community is more than the worldwide statistics. 
but at this point i don't know that so obviously i will write the published literature that says 12.5% confidence limits this is basically the precision rate the um, margin of error if you will that it will remain as 5% design effect will remain as 5% the only thing that you will have to change is the anticipated frequency that is denoted by the small letter p here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to calculate the frequency and voila here you go you have your confidence levels here and your sample size against that particular confidence level here now at 95% you are usually sure this is the best confidence level that you should take for your study right and this is 168 now you can add uh, at least 10% more just to be extra careful just just so that you know you can cover for the people who do not give you the right data for the people of uh, or the people sometimes you know they do not fill it properly then you have to eject that particular questionnaire from your study so it will you know lower the sample size and you will not be able to achieve this 168 number so just to be extra careful you can add the 10 percent extra uh, here so it would become around 180 something so um just just bear with me for just a minute this is sample size for frequency in a population that's 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 fine population for the uh, population size was 1 million obviously it could be more than that but it will not affect the sample size calculation if it's more than a 1 million then it will not affect any uh, sample size calculation so you can just keep it as 1 million if it's less than a million then obviously you have to specify the exact uh, number of residents you are uh, you're you know studying hypothesized or you know anticipated frequency was 12.5% and it automatically you know takes account for takes account for you know extra mi uh, plus minus 5% and the other things as i explained will remain the same so that's it guys if you want more of these videos please follow and subscribe for Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Kiran Abbas and I'm the founder of Taurus Research. At Taurus Research, we aim to promote and cultivate research culture among our medical fraternity. So if you like our videos, find them informative, please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey.